Hello, and welcome to today's program, How to Reach Your Customers More Effectively Using Personas. This webinar is being presented by Ila Awasti, a SCORE volunteer and marketing subject matter expert. As a consultant with WSI, the largest global digital marketing agency network, Ila works long and local service business owners across many industries to increase their website traffic and generate quality leads and sales online. Thank you, Ela, for sharing your experience on this important topic. And I trust all of our viewers will find it informative and helpful today. Can you uh, go to the next slide? My name is Maria Smith and I'm a volunteer with SCORE of Chester and Delaware counties. SCORE is a nonprofit organization that has been in existence for over 50 years and is a resource partner of the Small Business Administration. SCORE's, SCORE's mission is to foster a strong small business community by providing free mentorship and business education. We are here to support you and help you grow your business. Here in Chester and Delaware counties, we have 100 volunteers ready to help. Our mentoring and most of our educational programs are free. You will find many tools, templates, and other business resources on our website resource library. Next slide, please. You can uh, advance all these bullets, thank you. Today's program is one hour, scheduled till 11 a.m. The presentation is being recorded and will be made available to you after today's session. You all have been placed on mute so we can avoid the distractions. Please ask your questions in the Q&A box and we will take breaks to answer them. Welcome, Ila, our presenter. Thank you for that introduction, Maria. Hello, everyone. Very pleased to be with you today. Um, at this point, before we begin the content of the webinar, we'd like to understand our audience a little bit, who you guys are, where you come from, you know, where you are in your business right now. Um, so, Maria, can you can you open the poll, please? Mm -hmm. Can you see it? I I don't see it yet. Okay. I see it now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> so if everyone can take a moment to answer this question, how would you describe your current situation? You get to choose one. We'll keep it up here for a couple of minutes and get, until you get a chance to participate. Uh, I just want to check with the audience. Are you able to answer these questions? I don't see any action taking place. I, I think what I'm going to do is close it and reopen it, okay? Let me know if you can see it now. Maria, I don't see it. And I think earlier when I saw it, it was the results view rather than the poll view. So okay. there so, was no option to actually select it. Okay, so I'll try and fix that while you're um, getting started and then we'll come back later with it. Apologies. Okay, you want me to go on then? Sure. Okay, um, I will turn off my video at this point just so that you know people can focus more on the content and the slides. Um, so today we are talking about you know how to reach your customers more effectively using personas. We are in the business you know we all are looking to get more and more customers. How to do it most effectively. So when I say effectively what, what does that mean? As business owners, our primary goal is to sell our products and services to more and more buyers. We are effective when we are able to have our customers take the desired actions, whatever it might be, you know, whether we want them to buy or contact us or subscribe to something in response to our marketing messages. Most of us spend a lot of time as business owners uh, creating a great product or offering a great service. 
but many of us miss paying attention to the next crucial step, which is really understanding our customers. Brian Eisenberg here says, uh, our jobs as marketers are to understand how the customer wants to buy and help them do so. Now he says marketers, but really as small business owners, we are our own marketers as well. So it really applies to business owners as well. To sell effectively to our customers, the value proposition we present about our business, about our product, about the service, needs to really meet our customers' needs. For example, if you are trying to present cost-effective as your value proposition, and the prospect has already determined that the quality that they're looking for does not come cheap, they will rule you out right away. On the other hand, if your product utilizes a sustainable manufacturing process, but the customer only cares about getting the best price, typically in people's minds, sustainability, uh, eco-friendly equals higher prices. So your message about sustainability will drive this kind of customer away, even though it might be a good thing. So we need to know who we are selling to and our message needs to reach them. But most importantly, they need to be paying attention, which is the most crucial part. You can say all you want, but are they paying attention? So how do we do that? We do it by defining and developing buyer personas. What is a buyer persona? A buyer persona is a semi-fictional representation of your ideal customer based on a combination of market research, customer demographics, and behavior real data about your existing customers and your understanding of their motivation and challenges. Why do we need buyer personas? If we are trying to communicate with everyone, no one hears our message. And this might not be something new that you might be hearing. We need to understand the specific buyers we are trying to reach, what keeps them awake at night, what they're interested in, what they're not interested in, this information along with our company's differentiators are the selling points we want to include in our marketing messages. And that's how we'll get their attention. So I'll give an example again here. If you're a skincare business, you will not be successful if you're trying to sell a five-step skin regimen to a busy working mom of five, uh, small kids. No matter how well you prove its effectiveness, because this is somebody who's running around all the time and is barely able to find time for showers most days. So how is she going to find time for a five-step skin regimen? So instead, your message should highlight, you know, quick and easy application, safe and non-toxic product for her kids because they might be rummaging through her drawers all the time. And maybe even address eye bags from sleepless nights. So rather than trying to sell to anyone and everyone with skin, try to segment your customers into different groups. For example, if uh, you're selling an acne regimen, you might want to target teenagers with acne. So your persona is Justin, the 15 year old high school student. If your product helps balance natural oils, you might be looking to target women's, you know, suffering with postpartum skin issues. Um, so your persona would be Jennifer, the 30 year old mom with a two month old baby. If you're selling skin soothing gels or lotions, in that case, you are looking to target men dealing with skin irritation due to shaving. And then your persona will be Mike, the 30 year old business executive. For an anti-aging or anti-wrinkle treatment, your customer could be a middle-aged woman fearing onset of wrinkles. So your persona would be Maria, the 50-year-old office manager. When you think about your customers this way, you can do a deep dive into their lives, their concerns, their behaviors, and their needs and develop a value proposition for your products in a way that makes these personas stop everything and pay attention to your message because they connect with it. For example, just in the high schooler we just mentioned, he's facing skin confidence issues because of his acne. He also fears not being able to have a romantic partner, which is a big concern at this age. He's nervous about speaking up in class 
and he does not like the class photo day. Maria, the 50 year old, she does not feel young and desirable anymore. She fears younger people coming in and taking her job and she wants to feel fresh and vibrant again. So I hope this helps you think, you know, a little bit more into how to really do a deep dive into the behaviors, the concerns, the thought processes of each of your, you know, each type of customer that you have. What are the benefits of creating biopersonas? It helps you win more business and increase your revenue. So buyer persona represents the type of customer that gives you the most revenue with the least objections over the longest period of time. That's the best kind of customer you want. Personas help you understand your unique selling points. How does your business solve the exact challenge this customer is facing? What are the personas value drivers and how does your business meet them? Join the dots between what the persona is looking for and what you're offering and to come up with a winning, unique selling proposition. Personas help you map out the winning marketing strategy throughout the awareness, consideration, and decision stages of a buyer's journey. It helps you craft the perfect message to your prospect. Your marketing messages say exactly what your customers want to hear. And personas are the missing link in your content strategy. They set the tone, style, and the delivery strategy of your content so that it's more successful. So um, now that we have understood you know, what personas are and how to think about it and why they're important, uh, the next step would be to move on to understand how we can create biopersonas. But before that, I think we have another poll uh, for, you know, Maria, we might want to try it again. Yes. See how I, it I think time. I figured out what the problem is. So I'm going to try the first one first, and then okay. we'll put the one about personas up next. Okay, let's uh, give okay. this a shot. Oh, can you see? I can see, yes. And it, okay. looks like and it looks like people are able to answer. That's awesome. Apologies, there was a little technical click that I missed. Great. And you should be able to see, are you able to see the results on the screen or not yet? Not yet. Okay. All right, I'll give it one more minute. We have just a couple more people who are finishing. Okay, let's take a look. So you see the results here, 17%, um, 33, 17, 33. Okay. Okay. All right. Now the next question, um, let me get to that. And let's do the same thing. Here we go. Hopefully you can see this one on customer understanding. How well do you understand your customers today? Choose one. Okay, just another minute for a few more answers. Okay, we're almost there. Thank you everybody for participating. This is so helpful. Okay, and here are the results. Okay. A of folks don't have customers, a whole bunch are working on it <laughs> and some have a, a, a little ways to go. <laughs> right, so, so it looks like it's exactly the kind of audience, you know, that will benefit from this content today uh, because I think they're just kind of starting out in their business or planning a business and they are they are looking to learn more about their business uh, about their customers and the process so this is this is a good good starting point in that process so now let's learn 
more about you know how do we create personas um moving the slide here so in case of existing businesses and i'll go quickly through this slide because it looks like you know we do not have a lot of people in in that kind of category uh, but google analytics is a tool that you might want to learn more about if you are in the process or in the early stages of your business it helps you uh, it helps you understand the traffic that's coming to your website who are these people give you demographic information about your website visitors so it's a good place to get more understanding about your uh, your visitors and your customers and if you do not have that on your website do install that uh, if you have a Facebook page, uh, again, I think you need more than 100 fans for this uh, uh, audience insights to be available, but uh, Facebook also provides you insights about people who are, uh, you know, members of your Facebook audience. Um, you can also get lists from your local library based on this demographic information, and then you can utilize those lists to do, you know, further digging and send out surveys and stuff. So um, again, for beginners, if you like to learn more about Google tools, go to Google, Grow with Google. It offers tutorials and webinars to help businesses learn more about the, these various Google tools. Uh, SCORE National and Grow with Google are partners, and you can go to uh, any SCORE member to you know, help learn more about these tools. Now, whether you are an existing business or just starting out, creating an empathy map really helps you get into your customer's shoes. Uh, in bigger companies, you know, uh, representatives from different customer facing departments come together in a workshop setting to brainstorm this. In smaller businesses, anyone who interacts with the customers can come together. It, it could be, you know, just, just two or three people together uh, to, do this exercise think more about the customers or for solopreneurs or people who are just starting out this can be a brainstorming exercise just done independently all you need is to sit down and think so what you're looking for is answers to these questions what do we know about our customers who are they you know what are their demographics what are their problems and challenges what is important to them what influences their decision to buy or take action what sorts of content and information appeals to them? What doesn't appeal to them? How do we communicate with them in terms of language, tone, and emotion? And why do they choose us? How would we find them? And how would they find us? Now, armed with information collected from this empathy map exercise, we can take the next steps to hone down the details. Um, this is where surveying the actual customers or prospects comes in. So the empathy map is going to help you create the questions and the responses to build up your surveys. Now you can either interview people in person or go about it more formally. Depends on where you are in your business and how many customers you have access to. And uh, again, for people just starting out, it doesn't really have to be cus actual customers. It could just be people who think, you know, who you would be targeting and your friends and family who might be an ideal prospect. You can just go and talk to them and interview them. Um, a discussion with score mentor uh, or a marketing subject matter expert may be useful for anyone who may want to understand more in depth about how to create these surveys. Uh, so please do reach out uh, to score mentors if you want to understand more about this. Uh, various kind of survey tools available, you know, again, you can interview people in person, you can create polls on social media, you can uh, email surveys to your list using SurveyMonkey or MailChimp, you can also create simple Google Forms and use, use them, you know, to share through email, uh, in person, through social media, anywhere and everywhere. Now, here's a sample template to be used for persona building. Uh, this is a very high level, uh, not really very in-depth, and which is what I would recommend initially when you're just starting out with this process. As your business evolves and as you get more comfortable with the process, you can dig deeper and build a more complex, detailed persona. But to begin with, this would suffice. 
There are also online options available to build and generate personas. You can search Google for templates and find that find you know one that fits your business and your customers better and use that. Here I've given um, just an example of a persona for my own business. So I I'm a digital marketing consultant. I help businesses with their lead generation. So I typically work with two kinds of, I, I have created two kinds of personas for me. One would be uh, what you see on the screen, the Joe, the small business owner. He's the owner of a small painting company. He's about 40 years old. He wears many hats. He's always on the move. He's very proud of the business he has built. He understands that his business needs to be visible online for him to grow. He's looking to build a brand around his business and he wants to grow. Why would he want to use me? He needs a constant influx of leads. He does not have an in-house marketing person. He does not have time for lead generation and so on. How would I help him? I would help him scale and grow his business. Uh, what could be potential objections? So this is just, this is just a sam sample of my persona. I'm putting it out there so that maybe it helps you think more about you know what your own persona could be this is a second example uh, i also work with marketing managers of small companies so this is kathy the marketing manager uh, she's about 35 year old she manages the marketing activities of a small company she's knowledgeable she knows a bit about marketing but she does not have the right resources or the in-depth subject matter expertise to be able to execute on them. So she's looking for a partner to bring in. Her personal motivation is to be a star in the organization, to be the one who's, you know, helping grow the business. He's, she's, the, she's the one who brings in the leads. So she wants to be recognized. She wants to be the star. Now, uh, th these are just some other templates, you know, you can use, there are different things available online. Um, you can feed in and it will generate a digital output of your target personas. Again, you can go as high level or as deep as you want. Another example here. Uh, now, some tips I would like to give here. Um, typically people ask, you know, how many personas do we build? So it really depends on the business, um, how many types of different customers you deal with, how many personas you want to build. But uh, generally, most businesses do well with two or three personas. Do try to give them a name. So it makes for a better representation of all the traits of that persona and helps to keep them top of mind. For example, if anyone remembers Joe the Plumber from the 2008 presidential ca uh, election campaign, and I might be dating myself here, but that name Joe the Plumber was enough to bring everything he represented to our minds. You know, the, the politicians, nobody ever needed to go deep into, you know, what he represented. It was just Joe the Plumber and we knew what, he, what people are talking about. So that was a persona. Personas can also be based on the buying stage. So not just demographics, but also the buying stage. So a buyer's journey is typically made up of three stages. Uh, awareness, when they are just getting to know about the product or service consideration, where they, are, uh, they know about it now and they are doing deeper research and understanding more. And then decision, where actually they're, going, they're making the buying decision. So depending on which stage in the journey they are, they have different questions and concerns and need different messaging based on this uh, for your marketing to be successful. So you might want to create personas based on these different buying stages. Negative personas are also important. So who you want as a customer is good, but it's also important to be very clear about who you do not want as a customer. So that way you're not wasting your time on tire kickers, on people who will not be your most profitable customer in the long, long run. Excuse me. Uh, we can take a break for some questions here. Maria, do we have any questions coming in? Uh, 
Not not in the box at the moment, but um, actually I was going to ask you about this last comment you made about negative personas or, or the types of customers we would prefer maybe not to do business with. Can you give some um, examples either from your own experience or from um, your studies on, on the idea of personas? Yes, so uh, for my own, uh, I can give you an example from my own business. So I typically work with companies who would have, you know, a certain budget. So for me, uh, you know, that is very important. Anybody who is maybe just starting out in the business and, you know, just figuring things out, they are not at a point in their business where I would be able to help them. So that's a very important distinction for me. And I struggle with this in the beginning. You know, I was willing to talk with anybody and everybody, but I understand that now um, it's not going to be a mutually beneficial relationship. So what I do now is I um, help them, you know, with the advice and, you know, and any, you know, you're just conversation guiding them, but I would not take them as customers and I would not even start that process of prospecting. Mm -hmm. Thank you, that's helpful. Uh, we welcome. don't have any um, questions in the Q&A box right now, but we have one that came in offline. Um, uh, it's probably uh, someone who may be starting up, um, is what size companies uh, should think about using personas and can you change them over time? Absolutely. So every company, every size of company, everybody needs to think about persona. Uh, the reality is that most small businesses do not. As I, as I just gave my example, you know, they're starting out, they're willing to talk with anybody and everybody, you know, they just want revenue, they, they want their business to grow. Um, but Bigger companies are usually good with that. Um, many of them can still need more help, but bigger companies usually think more about it. So it might be a general perception that it is meant for bigger companies, but really, if you think about it, um, you're starting a business, you really need to understand your customer. That's the basic. So whether you are, you're even thinking about starting a business, uh, you first have to think who that product or service that you're going to sell is going to cater to. So it's for every every size of business. Um, and the second was, can it change? So yeah, absolutely. Um, it can change. It can evolve. In my example that I gave you, again, that was, you know, as, as I said, when you're starting out initially, it could be very high level. Uh, as you as your business evolves, as you understand more and more about your customers, it can you can go more in depth into each and every stage, each, each and every uh, each and every uh, like even demographics or their thought processes. But you can also change once you realize that okay, this customer that you maybe thought was going to be profitable is has a different set of concerns that you just cannot address. So maybe shift your persona from, you know, from that to something else. Thank you. We do have a, another question in the Q&A box. After you establish your initial personas, how often should you reevaluate your personas? Often, I would say, you know, again, depends. Uh, this is just a general guideline. It's not a hard and fast rule, but once a year at least you know sit down and look at all your customers and see who were the most profitable you know and who were not who who were probably the ones who you wasted your time on or didn't turn out to be as profitable and based on that i'm i'm sure if you do that on a on a regular basis on an annual basis you will uh, you know gain a lot more beneficial information from your personas than just creating it once and and just you know forgetting it thank you i guess that does make sense too ila since um in today's marketplace the world keeps changing um so much um i guess needs and wants and preferences of course don't stay the same Absolutely. I mean, yeah, the, the times we are currently living in, especially the last two years, are the best example of nothing is static in this world, right? Everything is going through change. 
um, we would be we would not be doing this webinar online two years ago, right? We would be probably sitting in a room talking to people in person. Correct. Thank you. I, we don't have any other questions in the box at this time, but don't hesitate to go ahead and ask your questions and we, we can take uh, pauses to take care of those. Thank you. Okay, so moving on, now that we have learned what a buyer persona is, uh, why personas are important and how to create them, let's understand how we can use personas in our marketing. Creating website architecture. So when you're building your website, you think about listing your product and services. A typical website would have, you know, company information, contact information, and so on. But we also need to pay equal attention to our personas here and what they're looking for. Um, many times, you know, we see that when we arrive at websites, they have listed their products and services but it may or may not connect directly with the person who's visiting the website. When they visit your website, they're thinking, you know, am I in the right place? And what do I do next? We all know about short attention spans these days. So our job is to address these questions for them instantly and get them to the right place in minimum number of clicks. Having well-defined personas here really helps us map their journey. I'm sorry, I moved my slide. Uh, and direct them to content on the website that was created specifically for them. Um, and that is what will lead them to think that, yeah, I am in the right place. Creating website architecture. Uh, so when in this company, uh, the this company places vending machines offering healthy food options in various facilities like you know gyms and educational institutions and institutions of any kind so they primarily cater to three types of customers consumers who are visiting these facilities and they buy the food so in this case that persona could be emma the 30 year old fitness freak uh, the supplier who's stocking these machines with their products so in that case the persona could be mark the 35 year old sales guy and the third could third type is uh, owners or managers of these facilities. So it could be Michael, the 40-year-old gym owner. The website in this case clearly captures the attention of each type of persona individually and directs them to uh, the content that was created specifically for them. Understanding your customer personas also helps you create good copy on the website. And to, it helps you to create content that speaks to their value proposition and addresses their concerns. So when we are writing for Emma, the fitness freak, the copy needs to talk about health and nutrition value of these foods. When we are talking to Mike, uh, Mark, the sales guy, we need to talk about profitability of this location and you know putting their food at this location. Uh, when we are talking to Michael, the facility manager or the gym owner, the copy needs to talk about branding, goodwill, uh, exposure, the food traffic coming in and the profits from it, uh, the membership retention that these machines might help with, these, because these are all the things that he cares about. Another way to use information about your personas is to create calls to action on your website that nudge the visitors into action. Uh, what's a call to action? It's a prompt in the form of a short phrase on your website, encouraging visitors to take the desired action. Uh, you would often see it as text placed on buttons on the website, but they can also be without buttons. Some examples are uh, learn more, add to cart, uh, buy now, get your discount here, subscribe now, et cetera. Uh, going back to our skincare example here. So instead of resorting to generic calls to action like buy now, when you nudge the visitor with a CTA, that CTA is a short for uh, calls to action, that touches a nerve uh, and really addresses what motivates the visitor, your call to action, which be much more effective in having them take that action. So here you see uh, on the screen, some calls to action that might work better for the buyer personas in our skincare example, 
compared to the generic by now. So face your next interview with confidence. Get ready now for seniors' photos. These are some of the concerns that you know your personas were struggling there. Now let's say you're in the business of cleaning homes. Uh, you have already distinguished yourself as residential cleaning rather than uh, commercial cleaning. But even within the residential cleaning, what are some of the different customer types you might be working with? So first example here is busy executives who want to enjoy or relax on weekends rather than clean. They have the time, they just don't want to do it and they can afford it. Uh, so our persona here could be Jasmine, the business owner, the business executive, sorry. Um, Second persona could be parents of toddlers who are always on the move, uh, always on the, I'm sorry, kids who are always on the floor, toddlers who are always on the floor. Um, so it's important for them that the floors are clean at all times, right? Or the baby will get sick. So in this case, our persona would be Amy, the young mom. Third type could be parents of young and active kids who are always running around from work to home to activity to another activity and back to the grind. So they might be looking forward to get some family time rather than cleaning when they have, you know, that rare times when they have some times. So in this case, the persona could be Lisa, the busy parent. So here on screen, you see some example of uh, calls to action that are customized for each type of these personas. So for the busy executive, it's take back your life. For the young mom, it's keep your family healthy. For the busy parents of teenagers, it's uh, take back your family time. Having clearly defined personas also helps us in determining the marketing strategy that will be the most effective for us. So when we have answers to questions like, um, what does, what, where does your persona get their information from? Where are they spending their time, you know, online or offline? Uh, do, what do they use to do their research uh, when they're thinking about buying a product or service or just addressing their general concerns? Uh, what kind of conversations interest them? What does not interest them? What are their buying behaviors? How do they make their buying decision? Who are their influencers? Who are the people they follow? Uh, when we know exactly, you know, uh, answers to all of these questions, we know what our message needs to be and how that message needs to be delivered. And that, in a sense, is going to dictate your marketing strategy. It helps us choose the advertising platform if we are thinking about advertising. So uh, knowing the demographic makeup of our personas and matching them with the available platforms helps us narrow down our choice. So for example, here, if you're de deciding between advertising on Bing or Google, know that you know um, Bing is generally preferred by the older audience, older demographic, Google by the younger. And most of Bing users come from North America, whereas Google users are worldwide. So map this information against your demographic and you'll know which, where you need to advertise on. Also choosing the social media platform. Um, choose TikTok if you're marketing to kids and teenagers, whether it's a product meant for them, or maybe even in cases where kids influence the decisions of adults in the household like vacation planning. Kids usually have a big say in that. When we are talking about demographics, Facebook is generally preferred by um, older generation, the Generation X and the Millennials, Instagram by uh, the Millennials and Gen Z, and TikTok is really for the younger generation, the Gen Alpha. Buyer personas come in extremely handy while creating content. So when you're running ads on any channel, online or even offline, you can run different campaigns targeting different personas, speak their language, and ensure success. Your blogs and video content can be customized to their needs and behaviors. Your social content will be more successful and get more engagement because it resonates with the audience. If you're sending out marketing emails, you can also segment them based on different personas. 
So that was enough talking on my part. Uh, now it's your turn. Take some time to sit down and think about your customers. Talk to them, understand them. Amazing things will happen when you listen to your customers as per the former CMO of Airbnb. Um, we can take some other questions at this time if we have any. Um, but before we move on to the questions, let me just say this. If you have, I know this was a lot of you know food for thought. Uh, you may not have questions right away. If you have any questions later on, uh, any specific questions about your situation, or uh, just feel free to reach out. My contact information is there on the screen. Or reach out to your local SCORE chapter also. They will put you in touch with a SCORE mentor or a subject matter expert to help you out. Uh, Maria, do we have any more questions? Um, nothing in the box just yet, but um, your last comments about social media, I found really interesting because so many of our SCORE clients who receive mentoring or those that we meet in the marketplace are so concerned these days about having the right social media content and reaching people in social media. But I was surprised to see um, that none of the um, platforms uh, are actually targeting people who might be 40 or older or 50 or older. And I was thinking about, you know, what about the small businesses that focus on real estate or senior citizen services? Um, are, it, are there any recommendations on what platforms to use for um, a slightly older audience? Um, when we talk about social media, Facebook is, uh, I, I think what it listed there was the uh, the biggest segment, but that doesn't mean that, you know, other segments are not using it. And Facebook, unfortunately, um, or I mean, like it or not, it, it is becoming more suited for older generations. Younger generations are not as much on, so, uh, on Facebook anymore. So it's definitely for 40 year old, 50 year old, 60 year olds, Facebook is the platform if you want to look into social media. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and maybe um, this is part of a different um, uh, topic, but what about email, email marketing or other avenues in addition to social media? Um, is so is your question how to use personas in email marketing or what? Well, or just the idea of using email to um, uh, access or to communicate with your personas? Yeah, absolutely. So when you are what we do as business owners typically, especially small businesses, you know, we create an email and we like to call it a blast. Uh, we create content and we blast it out to our email list. Uh, when we know more about our personas and we actually look into our customers and segment them out into different kinds of personas. Now we are not creating that blast. Now we are actually creating useful content, valuable content that that particular kind of persona will find helpful and interesting. And so that we are customizing content. We are sending different email sets to different people. That doesn't right. mean you're sending, you know, a hundred different emails to a hundred different people. Um, that's where the number of personas come in. So maybe you have two or three different types of personas. So you'd create three different variations of that email, create content meant exactly for that kind of persona and segment it out and send it to different, you know, customer groups that way. So it definitely comes in very handy. Any kind of content, you know, anytime you're talking to your customer, any messaging, it, it does come in handy. Thank you. You're welcome. We have another question in the box. Uh, will watching your competitors be of value in establishing personas? Absolutely. Um, it will. It will give watching your competitors definitely gives you more insight into your own business, who they are targeting, right? So you have to closely watch, you know, what they are doing in your, in their business, who they are targeting, who they are speaking to but not blindly follow it. So, you know, your business should be unique. And that's why, you know, when we talk about unique value proposition, you need to understand what you're, you are bringing on the table that is different from your competitor. And your persona may or may not be the same as your competitor, or you may go more in depth than your competitor while targeting your personas. So definitely watch it. 
um, but be careful. Uh, definitely do not copy it. Um, you know, do your own research, talk to your own customers, analyze your own business before deciding on it. Thank you. That's very good advice. You're welcome. Okay, right at the moment, we don't have any uh, additional questions. We can move on. And if questions pop up in the box, we will still have time to, um, oops, here we go. Let's see. Um, I may have missed it, but there are, are there any tools, apps, or sites you would recommend to gain more information on B2B customers, business to business customers? Um on more on business to business customer. I think there are different research uh, co companies who put out, you know, variety of different re research, right? It depends on what you're looking for, but Gartner is one of the biggest names. Um, HubSpot does a lot of research on B2B from time to time, though it's a marketing automation platform, but it's nice to watch them. Uh, it would really depend on your industry, you know, where you want to get this information from. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a, a general recommendation like that just to get gain insights on your customer. It would really depend on the industry. Yeah, that, that does make sense. I Having come from um, both a bid, bid, well, business to consumer and a business to business background myself, I do remember we would work very closely with trade organizations. They can be very helpful in terms of um, having lots of data on your specific industry. So, I mean, I can use my own examples of, I was once in the ice cream industry. So that was all part of the food market. And they had some very specific trade organizations that were very connected, networked and had lots of data Another completely different category I worked in was the oil and gas market. And um, similarly, the, you know, the whole power industry and um, uh, that, you know, oil and gas technology industry had um, very formidable trade associations. So those might be helpful depending on the category of goods or services that you're working with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we're good to move on. Okay. So. Okay. Your turn, Maria. <laughs> My time. So I just wanted to, uh, I'm trying to get my video to go on. I don't know. Here we go. Okay. Well, first of all, Ila, uh, thank you. You gave us a lot to think about and excellent practical examples too. As mentioned earlier, everyone uh, will receive the recorded webinar following today's session. Um, and, you know, just remember that SCORE is here to help you with the next steps on your business plans and challenges. Please reach out to your SCORE mentor for support. Um, maybe uh, today's conversation sparks some questions or um, thoughts about the actions you might want to take. Uh, you're not alone in the process. If you aren't already working with a SCORE mentor, you can request one by going on our website link you see here on this page, which will be sent to you, or by calling the phone number and speaking with Katherine Weisenberger, our office administrator, and she can help you to um, uh, search for a mentor. This information will also be included with um, the recording uh, when, you, when you get that email from SCORE. So look for that. Um, and, and know that our SCORE mentors can um, meet you face-to-face -face if that's your preference, or they can use um, a video techniques like Zoom or Google Meet, uh, or they can talk with you on the phone, email. We work with all kinds of communication processes. Okay, let's go to the next slide. And in the meantime, we have a question in the box. Um, the, actually, it's a comment. It's a great one. Libraries have a lot of reference databases, which could be of value. Um, and for those of you who might be local, uh, the Chester County Library actually has a very significant business library with a business librarian who does one-on-one -on -one consultations. Uh, don't hesitate to take advantage of that. Okay, so I'm going to take, um, um, I'm going to put up one more poll here. Let me get to the right one. Yeah. 
and um, ask for your comments on today's session. This really helps us um, to improve our own services and to actually know what other sorts of topics are most important to you. Uh, we're always looking for feedback to make our program just a little bit better. So if you could take a moment to fill this out, I assume that you can see it. We'll just pause for a few minutes to give people a chance to answer these questions. And again, we wanna thank you for taking your time today. We know your time is precious and um, it's great that you're investing in your own understanding of your markets and your customers in order to have a better, stronger business. Good for you. Okay, just another minute. All right. Well, um, thank you everyone. Uh, on this page, you see the contact information for SCORE. Don't hesitate to call us with any questions, whether it's about today's topic or another. Um, and that's a wrap for today. Thank you, Ela. Thank you everyone for joining us. We hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.